So, I wanted to go into a little bit about my dry bean seed saving experiences and adventures and also talk about my plans for the dry beans we're going to do here on the farm in uh, 2017 because um, a lot of what my personal experience has been is directly contradictory to uh, a lot of the stuff you're going to read in like a seed saving manual like seed to seed um, and uh, the kind of recommendations you're going to get from Seed Savers Exchange about how to save seed from beans, which this these are all Phaseolus vulgaris, um, the common bean, um, and uh, it is the common bean is considered one of the easiest crops to save seed from, and it's one of the crops that they typically seed saving manuals will recommend you start with because in the literature beans are theoretically uh, natural inbreeders and don't outcross all that much and so I'm gonna give an alternative view and my experiences just to let people know what is possible with dry beans and the problems you might run into but also the really interesting and exciting things you can experience if you're willing to uh, just take nature as it comes, kind of. Alright, so what we have here, these are three different bean varieties. This bean here on the upper left is a heirloom called Doloth. And that is, and this is a very old time Vermont pole dry bean heirloom. And uh, Sh Lee has a very excellent blog, although it's kind of gone silent over the last few years. But she is a very experienced seed saver and is very into saving Vermont heirloom beans. And this is a sort of a a bean she kind of rescued from extinction more or less and I believe she's the one who gave it the name Doloff but uh, there's a whole write-up on Doloff on her blog and I'm not gonna you know steal her thunder and in my experience Doloff is a very productive pole dry bean uh, and it is an extremely delicious pole dry bean um, and if you are interested in growing a pole dry bean Doloff is a pretty good bean to grow. Uh, there are two other beans that are rather similar that are also actually rather productive. One is called Golden Lima, which looks very, very similar. I would say they're probably two, they could easily be two strains of the same bean. And Lee goes into that speculation on her blog. Um, and then there is also Skunk Bean, which is a traditional Haudenosaunee heirloom um which is also very similar sh similarly shaped they are very it's a very flat sort of uh bean with a speckled sort of pinto pattern but skunk is actually i have skunk one moment so this is skunk you can see it's very similarly shaped to the doloff um, and it has a similar color pattern, but it's in black and white, hence skunk. Um, and by all accounts, um, skunk is slightly more productive than Doloff. Uh, and that's, well, by the account that I've heard, the, you can buy skunk and Doloff commercially now from Fruition Seeds, which is a small online-only seed company based out of Naples, New York. Um, and they have a website that I will link in the description. Uh, this bean on the top right here, this is Brown Trout. Brown Trout is a Jacob's Cattle type dry bean, heirloom dry bean from New England. Uh, Jacob's cattle is also referred to as trout. That's an alternative name for it. And basically the difference between this bean and Jacob's cattle is Jacob's cattle tends to be purple and white and brown trout is brown and white. Uh, and then this last bean here on the bottom is Mitla Black. 
and Mitla Black is something of an enigma. Usually you will see Mitla Black listed in seed catalogs as a tepary bean. Mitla Black is an extremely unusual common bean. It has a lot of strange uh, characteristics for a common bean, but it is without question a common bean. And if you grow it side by side with a true tepary bean, which I have done, you can immediately apparent, it is immediately apparent to you that this is not a tepary bean. Um, but if you grow it by itself next to other common beans, it looks so different that people assume that it's a common bean, or it's a tepary, but it's not. Um, and I can go into that in more detail. Uh, okay, so let me tell you the story. So let's make a long story as short as possible. This is brown trout. I received this bean and dola from Lee Hurley a number of years ago. And the first year I grew it out, I found one plant that had completely different seeds. And it was clear to me it was the result of a cross. And after I discussed it with Lee via email, um, we determined that it was most likely a Doloff brown trout cross. And I'm essentially certain that that's what it was. So we had a this bean crossed with Doloff. This is Doloff. And this seed is a little old. And a lot of these pink and buff colored bean seeds get dark the older, they, the longer they've been sitting around. And when it's first out of, first shelled out, it's like a really pretty buffy pink color. Um, and they've, they've darkened considerably since then. Um, this seed is a couple years old. So Doloff was basically the father of those cross beans. So I grew out those cross unusual bean seeds and I got a bunch of different phenotypes. These are just a few of them. I got several others. These are all pole types. You can see these ones are uh, sort of long, more long flattened. They're kind of a combination of both because they, they have the Appaloosa pattern and they also have, you know, the Pinto pattern from Doloff and they're about halfway in between and in shape. These ones are like uh, a smaller version of Doloff, but very, very similar otherwise. Um, but um, these are also poles. So these are like a tiny Doloff pole. And these are all F2s. So this was another pole, sort of a Doloffy one, but with even smaller seed. And then here's another pole that was like a dark brown uh, Pinto. Um, and then there were a number of segregants that were bush, and I actually ended up planting most of those. But one other thing that happened the year that I was growing these F2s out is relatively nearby. I was also doing a second trial, um, testing and comparing Mitla Black to a true tepary bean. And one of the outcomes of that was the Mitla Black, which was about 12 feet away, did a lot of hanky-panky with all of my F2 brown, uh, F2 Doloff brown trout crosses. And in 2014, I got a whole lot of off types um, show up in the grow out of these F2s, my F3 generation. And I have some seed of that. So I got all excited about those F2s and I grew out a rather large area of them. And when I shelled those out, actually before I even shelled them out, I could see some uh, very different, much earlier plants. And when I shelled out those plants, there were a bunch of black seeds. Now, where did all of that black color come from? Doloff is a brown bean, brown trout is a brown bean. There shouldn't be any black from crossing those two if you look up bean genetic. Many of them are solid black and some of them have a very slight amount of brown pinkish speckling. So it was clear to me immediately that what had happened was my F2s had crossed with Mitla black, okay? 
So I set, kept that seed separate. And I planted out a large amount. I, and I got a bunch of different phenotypes. Here's a bunch of reds and browns. Really interesting. And here's a bunch of uh, bush pintos. So what I have in my Mitla Black population, my Mitla Black brown trout doloff cross population is I have uh, plants segregating for vininess, I have plants segregating for a whole bunch of different seed coat colors, and I have um, a bunch of seed side segre segregations because Mitla Black is a very tiny seeded bean. Doloff is a very large seeded bean, and I would say that uh, brown trout is right there in the middle. So I've got all kinds of variation for seed size, for vininess, for earliness, for all kinds of characteristics, and they are still segregating. And it is very exciting to see this happen. And what I've decided to do as um, what's become apparent to me that unlike what the literature will tell you, it is difficult in my microclimate to keep pure selections of beans going. The bees cross them up rather aggressively. Now, and I believe this to be the case in most places in the Northeast where you have a healthy bumblebee and uh, sweat bee population. If you have a lot of uh, mature woodland or abandoned hay fields nearby, you <coughs> places that are unsprayed and relatively unmanaged, you are going to have a relatively robust population of wild pollinators and your beans will get crossed. Honeybees are uninterested in common beans. So in places like Oregon and California where the native bee populations have plummeted to almost zero, you have very little crossing. And in places where there is a lot of pesticide and agricultural chemical use, you have extremely low populations of wild pollinators. But if you, you know, have an organic growing situation and you have a lot of wild land near you, your beans will cross up because the bees will work those flowers. And so my experience has been you can't collect a hundred different bean varieties and grow them out and expect them to remain distinct. They will start crossing. And so how do you deal with that? My, my philosophy is to just select as if it is a open pollinated outcrossing species and live with the diversity. So what, I, and so what do I want? I want bush beans. I've decided that pole beans just do not work for me. I cannot spend the time every year trellising to grow out a dry bean crop. It's too much work and I don't have time to do it. So I need dry beans. I need beans that will hold themselves up off the ground so the pods do not rot. I need beans that will dry down efficiently on their own and be mature before um, we you know, be dry and mature so I can you know get them threshed before frost. And I also want all of the beans in the population to be of a similar size so that they cook down at the same time. Oh, and then the other thing is I don't like black beans. Uh, Mitla black, even though it's tasty and I like the way that black beans taste, I don't like the way they stain the food. That's just a personal preference. Lots of cultures and cuisines like black beans. They're not my thing, so I'm selecting away from them. This is probably going to be uh, my main bean. This and the red are going to be my main beans for uh, 2016. This is going to be my big, bat big patch of dry beans and I'm going to hopefully get a really useful amount for growing out a large field of them next year.